name's Jermaine Platt, and today I show you how to make strawberry wine. So let's go. Alright gang, so this is a video I've been wanting to do for a while, or more specifically, I've been wanting to get into making fruit wines for a while. Bought a book a while back, did a little research, and one of the things I like about the concept of fruit wines is I can go to the liquor store and you can buy all kinds of beer and spirits and wines, but they're generally grape wines. I mean, you'll see the sakis, you'll see the meads or whatever, but you generally don't see a lot of fruit wines. Now, what you will see is kind of the arbor mist of the world where they take, you know, juice of Merlot grape or a Pinot Noir grape or whatever, and then they add fruit flavorings and high fructose corn syrup, and it's kind of a wine cooler-ish kind of thing, but they're not... You know, you don't see bottles of just 100% blueberry wine or strawberry wine or watermelon wine. And one of the cool things about homebrewing is you're making stuff that you just don't find in the liquor store. So that's why I was really kind of jazzed about this. Uh, nothing to do with the Deanna Carter song <laughs> or her strawberry wine, but just fruit wines that you just don't see in a store. Uh, also, too, it kind of harkens back to, our, you know, a, a time where we're more agrarian, where people had gardens and fruit gardens and had excess fruit and went a lot of liquor stores well might as well you know mash some of this up and juice it and maybe turn it into a little wine so uh that like so that's the impetus for this real quick let's review uh what we're gonna need to, to make our strawberry wine in a recipe uh first we're doing a one gallon batch i am going to use my two gallon fermenter because we're going to have a lot of strawberries in there and just the amount of room uh, I'm going to need the excess space. So I've got my fermenter uh, sanitizing as we speak right now. So I've got my two gallon fermenter. I've got three one pound bags of frozen strawberries, whole strawberries. Uh, the reason I went with this is for a couple of different reasons. A, th they've already been, you know, cored and cut for me. Also, too, when you freeze and then thaw out fruit, it breaks down the skin. And in winemaking, sometimes you'll add something called a pectic enzyme to kind of break down the skin of that fruit, make it easier to extract all those sugars, whatever. Well, because, you know, we're buying something that's been frozen, now thawed, or whatever, it's already kind of doing that breakdown for us, which saves us a little step. Uh, next, we're also going to uh, need two pounds of sugar. Now, I know what you're saying already. Two pounds of sugar, three pounds of strawberries for one gallon. Man, that's going to be sweet. That's a lot of sugar. You know, I've talked about this before, the whole diabetes thing, whatever. This is for the yeast. Now, I'm not going to say this is not going to be a sweet wine. There's not going to be any sugar in it. I, I, don't get me twisted. But the majority of this is going for the yeast. So, uh, two pounds of sugar. Uh, next, I'm going to add a little acid blend. Whenever you do any kind of winemaking, you, you want kind of a balance in there. And uh, uh, you can find this acid blend in most of your uh, home brew shops. We're going to throw in uh, a little yeast nutrient. Again, we want the, the little guys to uh, have what they need to uh, get the job done. And then finally, I'm going to use a Lavalin wine yeast, EC1118, uh, for this little project. So now that we've got everything together, let's make some strawberry wine. All right, gang, the first thing we're going to do is bring one gallon of water. Uh, we're going to heat it up real quick. Some people tell you go ahead and bring it to a boil for sanitation purposes. I've never had a real problem not bringing it to a boil, so I'm not going to. Just want to heat it up enough to where the sugar, you know, blends in easy. So I've got it heating up. We're going to add our two pounds of table sugar. I would not get crazy uh, with any other kind of sugars, brown sugars, whatever. Uh, a regular table sugar. For this is just fine. We're just wanting to add a, a base of sweetness and more fermentables uh, to the, the flavor of the strawberries anyway. So I'm going to stir this, let this all kind of let my solution clear up, get all that sugar blended in. And then uh, I'm going to let this cool. While I'm doing that, I'll uh, clean out my fermenter and we'll come back to add the strawberries and continue on the process. Alright gang, so I threw in our three pounds of strawberries. Another reason why I like using the frozen strawberries is because it helped cool down our solution, get to proper pitching temperature. Somewhere in the 70s is generally uh, good enough 
uh, for pitching your yeast. That's something you always want to be cognizant of. You don't want to throw yeast in a hot solution. You may shock the yeast or even kill it. But anyway, we got her down to our proper temperature. So now we're going to add our teaspoon of acid blend. Again, this is for just kind of bringing a, kind of a balance to, uh, to our wine. And then I'm going to add a teaspoon of yeast nutrient. Again, we want a good active fermentation and uh, add that in there. I'm going to give her a good quick stir to get all that nutrient acid blend stirred up. And then lastly, we're going to add our Lavlin wine yeast. Uh, I'd use some on another batch, so I'm just going to use the rest of the pack. And here, no need to stir. You can if you want to, but there's no need to stir the yeast. Put our lid here. Now let's talk about the rest of the process. We're going to leave it in this primary fermentation for about two weeks. Then I'm going to transfer into a one-gallon glass carboy, and we'll leave the strawberries uh, out of that mixture. We're going to separate those off. Then we're going to let it sit in the secondary fermentation uh, for about two weeks. Then we'll bottle. It should be ready to drink in a month, couple of months down the line. Uh, these type of fruit wines tend to be better drunk younger. Uh, we're not making a big Zinfandel or even like a mead or something. Something that we're, you know, a big buttery Chardonnay. Something that needs some aging, needs some time, uh, you know, in the bottle. This should be drunk fairly young. So, uh, like I said, two weeks primary, two weeks in secondary. We'll bottle. A month or two later, uh, we'll give her a try. Um, I'm going to have some uh, tasting videos coming up soon. We've got a few meads, Viking blood, uh, pine nuts, stuff like that. We'll, we'll, we'll try. We'll eventually try, try these. Uh, I will leave the recipe down below for, for you. Well, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe down below. Also, please like the video because it lets you two know we're putting out good content. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, Please leave them in the comment section or you can always contact me on the Twitter page. Until next time, bottoms up.